What's going on you guys? It's your Huggable Hipster here and welcome back to another review. Today we are going to be diving into Ender Lilies. This is a fun game. This is also a very long time coming. I've been playing at this game for a while. I don't want to bore you guys with the really minute details, but there were save issues that were happening. There were things that were going wrong with the Switch and I couldn't entirely finish the game. Now normally what I do is I finish an entire game and then I do the review. But this time, this was an exception because I was trying to transfer the cloud data of the game Ender Lilies back over to my Switch. And I thought, you know what? You know what? I want to have it on both Switches. So I tried to make it possible to have both my save files on both Switches. I just shouldn't mess with technology a lot of the time because when that happens, I just end up really suffering. So as a result of me finicking with stuff, all of the save files that I had for the game got erased somehow. I don't know how, and I ended up having to restart the game uh, a month and a half ago. So yeah, that's been a fun process. So yeah, what, what you guys are basically seeing is the review of the culmination up until like almost the end of the game. And I did have to look up some background stuff and everything like that for the ending and everything, but that's about it. So I just want to go into this review, just be completely, just utterly transparent with you guys. Fearful Blight, a never-ending curse, and a young replica who has amnesia of the past that's better left untouched. Ender Lilies is a beautiful metroidvania game that has engaging puzzles and has deep roots in psychology and philosophy. Walking into this new decrepit world that causes mental strife, it's Lily's aim to purify the madness that spreads the rot even further. In a strange world that's visited by many of her kind that needs constant repair and culling of the madness that resides within it, this game is stunning visually, and even more immersive when it comes to the story. Ender Lilies creates this immersive world where the bosses are actually difficult, and I love difficult bosses. If you guys know me, you guys know I love my difficult bosses, and it ranges from this gothic atmosphere to this really cool metroidvania style vibe that I just dug immediately whenever I got into the game. And I know what you're going to say, Ariel, is it like Dark Souls if you're saying it's tough? False. But get that notion out of your head. Just because a game is difficult does not mean it is Souls-like. Now the thing is, is that I've seen this get tossed around a lot where you see this comparison to Dark Souls all the time, right? If the game is difficult, it must be Souls-like, right? That's completely false, completely untrue. Like I said before, just because a game is difficult does not mean it is Souls-like whatsoever. And the thing is, is that if you've seen the memes and only seen playthroughs and, you know, seen, you know, iterations to the game and everything, and that's your only basis of opinion is seeing that, then I can kind of understand where you're coming from because you're seeing one set ideology, you're seeing one set thing, and then you're like, oh yeah, so this thing must be like so-and-so. Not the case whatsoever. Once you play any Soulsborne type game, you know that there is nothing to compare to. It is a complete, just individual piece of its own. When entering into the world of Ender Lilies, I made the choice of a, doing a comparative review for this one, so I got it on both PC and Switch. I played the game on Switch and PC, and let me <laughs> let me tell you, the difference between the two platforms for this game is outstandingly different. It is to the point of where it is almost unplayable on PC because the controls are so finicky, but on Switch, it runs like a dream. Let's put aside the story for a moment and focus on the experience of the mechanics because I feel like that is a very crucial part to go into and I feel like it's a very very much of a deciding factor on whether or not you will be continuing the game. Now besides noticing the beautiful graphics when I entered into the game and the bosses and just how everything was set up, the controls on you know, on the Switch were just absolutely smooth. They were like butter. When you go and you do all the different actions, it seemed uniform. It seemed very organic and that's what it was. It was completely like, it was just puzzle pieces that fit together naturally. The controls were very intuitive and easy to comprehend right off the bat. There was no real like learning curve with it. You knew that this was to attack, you know, this was to block, you know, this was to do, you know, all that stuff. The developers for the Switch made it, the controls just very smooth and user-friendly, I will say. But the PC, on the other hand, it, it needs some work. Like For those of you who played it on PC, you'll know what I'm talking about. It, it's just the PC version has weird controls, and while you can, you can get used to it, there is definitely a learning curve more with the PC than there is with the Switch. 
Now, I'm going to read to you guys the controls because I wrote them down in the article that I posted, um, which you guys can find down in the description below. But the controls are as follows. Up, down, left, right to move. That's fine. Z to jump. X to attack. C to dodge. And A to heal. I don't know about you, but I never would have thought of used Z to jump necessarily. I would have thought spacebar or at the most E. But normally E is to use something or like a flashlight or whatever. But you get what I mean. It's not normally like very commonly used controls. So when people play this game, they're going to be like, people are going to see these controls and they're going to wonder what did I get myself into? But, you know, I feel like if the controls were more user friendly, I feel like on the PC, it would be a lot easier of a time. I didn't even finish the game on PC. I'll be completely honest with you. I was very close to finishing the game on Switch. Then all of the cloud crap started to happen. <sighs> Bad memories. And I found out that it was so much easier to utilize everything I needed to do on the Switch, more so with the PC. So keep that in mind. If you're getting on the PC, user beware, but if you're getting it on the Switch, you're going to have an easier time with it overall. So in the land's end, Lily is a young girl who has amnesia, who must fight the blight. She must fight everything that is evil, and so must all of her kind, which you'll see different dead versions of her scattered throughout the land. It's kind of creepy. The more it rains, the more blight and corruption there is. If you guys notice, that's kind of, I think, a little bit of an Easter egg to Death Stranding. It could actually be an homage to Death Stranding's Time Fall, because Time Fall, whenever you go out into that world and it's raining, you age. So it could be kind of like a more corrupted version of it, of where the rain literally turns you evil. <laughs> and there actually is such a thing as acid rain, so art based off of reality? Me think so. One Lily, one Freyta is now left to fight the blade. And where the psychology comes in with Lily is that the collapse after taking so much blight, because during the end of the game, it's a culmination of all of the blight that you have consumed over the entirety of the game. At the end, you kind of have that break and you see psychologically it implicates taking on a lot more than you could necessarily handle also referencing to a mental breakdown, basically leaving the person, AKA Lily, completely drained, just void of everything. Because when you see the end of the game, it's like, oof, gosh, this is this is psychologically very telling of not only the character, but also real life as well. When you try to take on more than you can chew, it normally shows with either a mental break, which is a very severe form of stress, but then you also have it on the lighter side, which is like, you just feel tired, you feel drained, you feel, I can't, like, I can't do this right now, you know? Continuing in the lens of psychology, more or less, the concept of purifying fascinates me. I love the fact that you can pray to heal, you can purify the blighted, and it's it seems like you can purify the um, the creatures or the people that meant the most to Freda during the you know during her lifetime. And I feel like that's pretty cool because you can use those creatures and use those people in aiding you in your bigger goal throughout the entire game adding more purified, more of those who used to be blighted, you know, you create this arsenal that you can use in your defense. And by purifying, it also has a psychological implication that it begs a question where Lily is purifying an outside source or a mental strife to an extent. This isn't just any Metroidvania style game. I feel this is a post-apocalyptic experience that brings to life all the goodness and smoothness of a AAA game, but it's an indie game. And I think that's really cool because the creation and the beauty and just the, I don't know, just the stunning features behind this game. It doesn't, it's in no way would I have thought that this was an indie game. So props to the developers, props to the writers and the creators of this game. You guys did an absolutely incredible job. It's a unique, fun, and immersive experience that will suck you in and create this just beautifully morbid world for you to play in. But you guys, that is it for today's review. If you all like my face and what I do, please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell down below because I make videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And with that being said, stay casually nerdy, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye, you guys.